it all started here, billions of years ago. Huge, practically unexplored. Yes, I'm talking about the sea. The oceans have drawn me under a spell that is as big as they are. That sounds a bit strange, but I love the oceans. I want to take you on a journey, a trip to the Atlantic Ocean. We will meet bizarre, but also very beautiful creatures. But before we can understand the sea halfway, let's take a look at what creatures lived in prehistoric times. Even then, the seas were populated by beautiful animals. These creepy sea monsters are called Dancleosteos. They belonged to the armored fish. It is believed that they could be up to 6 meters. With their powerful teeth, they were even dangerous to sharks. Uh, yes, exactly. There were sharks 350 million years ago. We are making a giant leap in time, and we are not in Jurassic Park. We are in the later Jurassic, 160 million years ago. What seagulls are today, were then pterosaurs. And here we have a group of plesiosaurs. Just like the pterosaurs, the marine reptiles were not part of the dinosaurs. They were a separate group of animals. As you can see, they have a big appetite for fish. They could reach a size of up to 3.5 meters. Dacosaurus. These were marine crocodiles up to 7 meters long. Instead of arms and legs, they had four fins, perfectly adapted to their environment. Yes, we are back in the present. More precisely, we are on a coast in the south of Tenerife. For many, the sound of the sea has a relaxing effect. And yeah, I agree. You don't have to dive far under the water to see beautiful sea creatures. Aren't it worse? and canary damselfish can already be seen. Huge, powerful rocks. On the water, they provide hiding places for various animals. Whoa, as if we were in another dimension. Oh man, I'm almost in tears again. <laughs> what we see there are salamoporges. They belong to the so-called sea breams. Synchronized 
as a school they swim through the reef. Sometimes it even happens that eating their meat can cause hallucinations that resemble LSD. So kids, stay away from drugs and fish. A limpet is also on the way. Yes, uh, it's also very slow for a snail. These rocky reefs don't look that spectacular if you compare them with coral reefs. But the animals are just as colorful. Like the nimble spray crab. This very shy crab is an omnivore. They flinch at the slightest movement from the outside. They often sit near sea urchins because they offer them protection. Nature amazes me every time. A spotted sea hare is passing through. This is a type of snail that can reach a size of up to 40 centimeters. These snails are strictly vegetarian and feed on seaweed and so on. This example is about 40 centimeters long. Yes, they are simply gentle giants. A few meters further, we meet hermit crabs. The cute little crabs need a shell because their abdomen is very soft. A little fun fact. Recent research has revealed that these crabs have an interesting way of mating. Since they are reluctant to leave their house, the males were blessed with a large... Uh, uh, well, I mean the genital... Uh, yeah, you know what I mean. That actually means that the crabs with the largest and most well-kept house having the largest... Uh, uh, you know. The canary damselfish faces the strong ocean current. This very pretty fish is very territorial. If a fish comes too close, he scares it away. And even if a diver or a snorkeler gets on his nurse, he makes it very clear very quickly. This fish can also be found especially in the Canary Islands, where it is very rocky.
and this very special guy is a garfish. This predatory fish lives just below the surface and has very sharp eyes. Although they're very shy, it sometimes happens that they reveal themselves in their full glory. Oh, and here we have a very pretty lady, a female European parrotfish. This fish is very sociable and often found in groups. They eat a lot, and yeah, they poop a lot. Well, the males don't look that spectacular. And they are also a lot smaller. Let's look again to the females. There is one species of fish that I fell in love with in particular, the Macaronesian sharpnose puffer. Like a typical puffer fish, it can inflate itself in threatening situations and it's even poisonous. I mean, oh come on, he's really cute. Another very interesting fish is the Atlantic trumpet fish. Yes, that's what it's really called. This fish is even able to change its color to camouflage itself perfectly. Yes, it's a bit difficult to tell which is in front and which is in the back. So, here's the head and here's the cow dolphin. Baby trumpet fish are also nearby. And there too, here's the head and here the cow dolphin. A normal water buoy. But even a simple man made object can serve as a habitat for many fish. Here we have young amberjacks. When they grow up, they are grey and not so brightly colored. As you can see, they live in small groups and are very curious.
these little white things are also animals, namely barnacles. However, they do not belong to the mussels, but are crustaceans, and more closely related to the crabs. With their small tentacles, they can filter out tiny plankton. And you can even see mini sea urchins here. Here a small comparison. Now we are going to take a little shore leave. Canary herring gulls. These birds are omnivores and are not afraid to snatch at human waste. They hatch their eggs on huge rocks and cliffs. Here we come to one of my all-time favorite animals, the red rock crabs. So yeah, I love all crabs and yes, all animals too, but whatever. This type of crab could really be called the rats of the sea, because they eat all kinds of dirt and dirt. But they are therefore very important for cleaning the seas. Yes, it is low tide, the water has retreated and now everything here is full of tidal pools. In every puddle something is crawling around here. This crab, which is only one centimeter long, is also looking for food. And here we have more barnacles. Now we can see how they filter the plankton. Since the water is gone, you can see the algae well. Algae are so underestimated, even though much of the oxygen we breathe is due to the algae. They filter pollutants, bring us oxygen, and so on. Algae is being researched more and more. It should serve as an alternative to plastic and even be the new gasoline. But get back into the water quickly, because the tide is coming back. We know relatively little about the oceans. There's still a great deal to be researched. Many new species to discover, new worlds to investigate. We may not be able to do this for much longer. Because of ruthlessness, ignorance, brutality.
But this film shouldn't be about things like that. We deal with enough negative things. Let's enjoy these beautiful angels of nature. Speaking of beautiful animals, here we come to the absolute highlight. We are looking for whales. And there we have them. Short fin pilot whales. Each dorsal fin is an individual as a person's fingerprints. And here we have the remains of a squid that these whales feed on. Ah, oh, shit. Sure. A huge ferry. Again and again it happens that the ships crash into the whales. Another problem is the huge noise that the ships put out. The tones are distributed much better in the water than on land. It sounds something like this. Unfortunately, it also happens that the animals become deaf or even die from it. The pilot whales are very stressed and since they are very social animals, they always check if everything is okay and everyone is fine. With this sounds they communicate. And indeed, the group is doing well, including their mother and her cub. Beautiful. Hmm. We are now at the end of our journey. I hope you enjoyed this trip in a surreal world. Dear Ocean, it hurts me that I'm so far away from you. Because only when I'm with you, I'm back home. Dancing sea turtles Caring fish mothers Floating jellyfish Sun on my skin, 
have become one with the sea.